Hi, everyone. Uh, it is a pleasure to, a pleasure and an honor to introduce uh, Professor Alan Benzikan, who has been a pioneer and a main contributor of, to several areas of theoretical and applied mathematics, in, including uh, control theory, uh, game, uh, dynamic games, mean field games, and so on. Uh, he has worked a lot also in applications to engineering, finance, and other areas. Um, he has a very extensive uh, teaching experience. He began in France in, in the Ecole Polytechnique, the Ecole Normale, the University of Paris. And actually he's a professor emeritus uh, at the University of Paris uh, Dauphine. And he has been at the University of Texas at Dallas since 2004, is that right, Alan? Yes, correct. 2004. Yes, yeah. it's so so long already. <laughs> yeah. that, uh, he has, he has had many important appointments. He was president of INRIA, uh, the French uh, Institute. Uh, he was uh, also president of the National Center for Space Studies in in, uh, in France. Uh, he was. A, President of the Council of the European Space Agency. Uh, I mean, he has really had a many different important uh, uh, positions. And uh, he's also a member of the French Academy of Sciences, uh, member of the International Academy of Astronautics. He's an officer of the merit uh, of the Federal Republic of Germany, a fellow of the American Mathematical Society, SIAM, and so on. You, you have a very extensive uh, curriculum, Alan. It's uh, incredible that you need a couple of hours to read the whole uh, <laughs> curriculum. Uh, he's the honor of, uh, I mean, he's the author of, of uh, or co author of over 300 papers uh, with a lot of uh, citations, over 30,000 or something like that. Uh, it's really amazing. Uh, Professor Ben Susan Square has had a lot of influence in. As I said, in many areas, in particular control theory and dynamic games. So it is very nice to have you here, Alan. Thank you for accepting the invitation. Yeah, sure. So please okay. go ahead. It's... Okay, thank you very much for this introduction. And I'm very happy. Thank you. I'm honored to, uh, to take part of this important event. 60 years uh, is, uh, uh, is already. Uh, Reasonable age is not <laughs> as, as much as my age, but <laughs> but uh, you will do it. You will do it. You will do it. So it's a uh, and uh, I think uh, first I congratulate you for this anniversary. I'm very happy now to see Hector as a chairman because. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Really. Yeah, it's uh, certainly uh, appreciated. You you stay with me in. Uh, already a few, few years back, right? Yes, yes. I'm uh, good to see you, uh, all of you. Uh, it's a very good group. And uh, I wish we can uh, have an extensive cooperation. Of course, we are not helped by this horrible COVID, but uh, we have to keep it. It's important. And uh, for me, I always say that Texas, uh, and Mexico, I mean, <laughs> very close, very close uh, uh, people, and we should work a lot together. And uh, okay, uh, again, so congratulations. So, uh, well, I um, have a, what about 50 minutes? Is that the idea? Right? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's okay. Take your time, take your time. Okay. Okay, so this, uh, this uh, talk was not uh, prepared for this meeting specially, but because it's uh, anniversary, I mean, it does, I mean, we can uh, probably go beyond just technical, specific technical talks. I thought it was appropriate. Uh, the idea of this talk was uh, in fact to make some publicity in my university, <laughs> UTD. <laughs> Because I am in a school of management, I'm not in a math department, 
And uh, I am a mathematician. So what the mathematician is doing in the School of Management, that's a good question. And uh, the idea was, the, in fact, there are a lot of mathematical problems in management science. I know you know that, but... Uh, uh, and uh, also, uh, I, uh, I, I also between us, uh, there is uh, there is a lot of opportunities for mathematics, but also a lot of uh, challenges because now with uh, on the one hand uh, what we call empirical tech methods and so on, empirical approaches, and also on the other hand, artificial intelligence, data, data science. And uh, in Hong Kong, I am in the school of data science, by the way. <laughs> in, uh, in data science, uh, that, uh, there is this trend that maybe mathematics is not the right uh, thing to do as a direct approach with uh, computers and data, uh, data driven uh, research and all these things. It's uh, so I think it's it will be wrong to consider that mathematics is less useful than it has been. And uh, I, I gave his talk uh, mentioning, uh, which a little bit ambitious, new mathematical problems in mathemat management science. It's not it's not exhaustive, of course. It's just uh, okay. That was uh, the motivation. I think it's relevant and. Uh, it's relevant for this uh, for this anniversary. Okay, let me see what I do. I do this. Oh, it's not. This one is not. Oh, okay, why not this? This is not working. What about that? That's not work. I have to use it. Oh, what, what, why not? Oh, here. Oh, okay, here. Okay, so there are a lot of stuff. Uh, I will probably not address everything. I want. I will focus on mean field uh, issues uh, because it's probably the most interesting. But uh, I want to just to recall that, in fact, uh, in fact, uh, if we go a little bit of history, we tried. We mentioned uh, Wendell Fleming <laughs> and the beginning of stochastic control. Uh, it's not new that mathematics has always been a very important, has played a role. Of course, it, usually we attach mathematics to physics, mechanics, but in fact, a lot of problems are, also, are, are uh, motivated by economics and management, and they are different. Uh, control theory was, in fact, more related to engineering at the beginning, it's still a lot. And, uh, and it was very, it has become very popular in economics and management, okay? So I want to mention, of course, uh, the, the origin is operations research started after the Second World War, uh, motivated by logistics problem in, in defense. And that where uh, Linear programming, non-linear programming, convex programming, scheduling, Markov chains, queuing theory. All these techniques were motivated by economic problems of operations research. Okay. Uh, and then there is the issue of optimizing over functions. So the argument is not an element of a Euclidean space, Rn, it's a function. And uh, existed in mathematics as calculus of variation, not much use in OR, and it came, it became with, it came with control theory. Uh, I thought the program was in 1957, but people told me that it's not true. It's 1961, so apparently a little bit after dynamic programming. Uh, okay, anyway, so you know control theory very well, so let me skip that uh, okay so since i want to focus on uh, mean field issues i just here recall the standard problem of control theory so that it is clear and then i will go to this is a, a deterministic control theory so there is no randomness at all so 
the control is a deterministic function. That's all. And uh, we have to minimize that. And of course, we can do Pontryagin uh, or Bellman equation for this. Then we go to stochastic control. Uh, where we have to take into account uncertainties. And as soon as there is uncertainties, there is an issue of information which is accessible to a decision maker. So in decision can be full information, uh, information can be full information or partial information. I will not touch here uh, the issue of partial information. Full information does not mean, you, it means that you know everything from the past. Of course, uh, you don't know anything about the future because otherwise it will be a deterministic problem, but you know everything about the past. So that's full observation. So if it is uh, partial, you will not know everything about the past. Okay. So then uh, the idea is to, to change the concept of control. You cannot think of a, just a function of time anymore. You have to look at the source of uncertainties. Here in Simplify, uh, I consider that the source of uncertainty is simply uh, related to, to a stochastic process, which will behave as a winner process. And at time t, I know everything from the past of this uncertainty, w. And, uh, and the control uh, should be, as we say, adapted to this, uh, to this information setup, which is represented by a filtration, okay? So then uh, that's quite clear. The source of uncertainty is this stochastic process. And any decision that we make, uh, at time t, the control must be depending on the evolution of the w up to time t, okay? So we build here what is called a filtration and uh, that's, uh, that's the way uh, in the case of full information in the setup for deciding uh, where we uh, take the control, control uh, process, okay? Uh, okay, so that's that's clear. And then uh, we extend the, the we extend the, the model the dependency model by adding some noise here, and we get instead of differential equation this object, which is a SD stochastic differential equation, in which uh, the source of uncertainty is here, W. You know that, so I will not not enter into uh, what the stochastic differential equation is. You know that very well. So just to, to show how we go from deterministic to stochastic. And then uh, here, remember the control now is not a deterministic function, it's adapted to a filtration, okay? Then, uh, then this is the payoff that we have to minimize or maximize. And we have, uh, that's a problem of stochastic control standard. So we, we optimize an average. I will come back, which is an important element of the discussion. And there is a wonderful theory that you know, I guess uh, very well, uh, because of a specific form of a payoff, uh, it turns out that the optimal control uh, is obtained in a very nice way, which extends the deterministic theory very well. So it is obtained through what is called a feedback. The feedback, so feedback is a deterministic function of X. This is a deterministic function. And then you replace in the, in, uh, in the stochastic SDE, you replace the V by this guy, then you get a more complex SDE. And if you can solve it, the state is a stochastic process. You plug it here and you obtain the optimal control in this way. So this is fantastic result because basically it tells you, which has a lot of engineering uh, interest. It tells you that you apply uh, what 
to use uh, control low and not, uh, you don't have to remember the past. Just observe the current state and decide the, the, the issue of the values and dynamic programming is a way to, to obtain all of this. Okay, this was a very important uh, state of uh, affairs, very important state of progress in the theory and has been extremely useful as you very well know. Drawback. Drawback of stochastic control. There is something which doesn't work, uh, which was there for long and you could not do much with it. Uh, drawback with stochastic control uh, with respect to deterministic control is that, in fact, we optimize something that we will never pay because we optimize a mean. And the mean is not reality. Uh, we never optimize the real cost. In deterministic case, is, that's fine. So there's no problem. Uh, if everything is deterministic, you optimize the real cost. Here, not. The real cost is random. And what you optimize is a mean. And the first thing, which of course we have to accept, is that we, in, in minimizing or maximizing the mean, we discard the issue of risk. Because the real cost can be very far from the mean. Uh, that's not very good. Okay. So, because eventually you pay the real cost, not the mean. And uh, so you may have optimized the mean, but it's not very helpful uh, in reality. Okay, that's uh, that's one uh, that's one of the difficulty. And this has been uh, well, the situation we can't do much about it, uh, but it has been recognized as the difficulty of stochastic control. And people, uh, if as soon as you want to do a little bit more uh, to take into account the variance, for instance, of the random cost. That would be a nice thing. Besides the mean, you want the variance, maybe more. As soon as you do that, everything collapses. Uh, stochastic control theory doesn't work. Stochastic maximum principle doesn't work. Dynamic programming, everything collapses. And uh, so we did not have, I think, a reasonable solution of this uh, issue of risk. There is risk sensitive, has been some work on risk sensitive uh, con stochastic control, which is an, some extension of where you take the exponential of the cost. And, but uh, it's very limited in terms of what you, we can do. It touches a little bit the issue of risk, but not. It is called risk sensitive, but in fact, it is not, uh, it is limited, but I have no time to explain that. But that was all, okay? Besides risk sensitive, there is nothing to address this type of problem. Until uh, the introduction of mean field type control around, uh, so mean field, uh, so these are, well, I think it is maybe more, more than 15 years ago now, a little bit more. So, in, so mean field control really provides, is an extension of stochastic control, which uh, provides very good tools to address the type of problem that I'm mentioning. Uh, but in fact, uh, two, two, so let me, uh, for instance, give an example at this stage. So you may remember uh, that, that would be the cost function for the stochastic control. And suppose I add that, the variance. Simple situation, variance of the, of the final state, because I don't want the final state to be too, too random. So in economics, for instance, uh, you would think of X as the wealth, that will be the terminal wealth when you retire. You don't want your retirement wealth to be very random, right? You want to know more. So if you add that, then you cannot use standard stochastic control, but it perfectly fits perfectly with mean field type control, okay? I will not develop it, just uh, mentioning uh, the idea, okay? 
So another situation, uh, which in fact uh, we have seen uh, personally, I've seen uh, many application in uh, issues uh, of energy grid management. I've been working on that, but also it's not just it's not the expected value of a state. You are interested in the expected value of a control. So the, the functional depends not only on the control, but also of the expected value of a control. That it's you, the standard mean field type control does not work. We need something expected, like a standard version of mean field type control. Okay. But so we have been in this direction a lot of interesting extensions which uh, allow to address uh, practical problem, I think, practical problem. And so it is really. Uh, to some extent, it likes stochastic control extended deterministic control. I think mean field control extends stochastic control uh, in, a, in a very useful uh, manner. Okay. Uh, but, uh, okay. But besides that, at the, more or less at the same time, independently, uh, there is uh, mean field games. There is mean field games. And mean field games has been produced by uh, Pierre Louis Lyons, the son of my supervisor, <laughs> Jacques Louis, and uh, who is a, a, extreme, a great mathematician, physics medalist, and uh, Jean Michel Lazry. Uh, and the mean field games, it's, uh, it's close to mean field type control, but it is. Uh, sorry, I will stop that. Uh, it looks uh, it looks like uh, so midfield games. It looks like uh, midfield control. Is that, is that, is that Sorry, I'm, uh, I'm I'm in the talk. Suresh. Okay, I will call you back. I will call you later. Uh, so mean field games it looks it, what is the difference very it's a quite a completely different issue although mathematics are uh, there is a lot of mathematical methods in common but conceptually it's completely different completely different so it's good to have that in mind and first of all refer to the idea that mean field is not invented by Pierre Louis Lyons <laughs> mean field is very old in physics uh, it's a very, uh, very fundamental concept of physics or mechanics. Uh, and basically, it's the principle of averaging. And uh, I was always amazed myself at the, at the I'm not a physicist, of course, uh, but uh, it's amazing uh, that physics. If you don't look at remote galaxies, uh, very extremely remote galaxies, or uh, or nano technologies, uh, very so the physics of every day, uh, which is maybe 90, uh, more than 95 physics. Uh, in fact, uh, it's it's amazing to see that it is summarized about maybe 10 equations. Uh, Heat equation, Maxwell equation, Navier-Stokes equation, or whatever. So, with a few equations, you have uh, most of physics. Uh, except again, you don't uh, you don't consider very extreme situations. And uh, this, uh, by the way, it's not true in the biology. It's not true in economics. Uh, it's true in physics and things related to physics like mechanics. And the reason of this phenomenon is averaging. Uh, because uh, if you look at a medium like a fluid or a gas, in fact, this medium contains myriads of particles in, in reality, right? And they move, all these particles move in the, in the medium and they move according to some energy principle and they are more identical. Okay, if you don't mix fluids and so on. 
And there is interaction. If you want to follow the interaction of all particles, it's an impossible task. It will be a, a so complex problem, but it's out of the question. But because of this, the fact that they're identical, in fact, uh, there is a averaging principle. Uh, and uh, you observe uh, you, the idea, you, it, you observe one particle and you have some term which change the evolution due to the interaction. And uh, thanks to that, you have a relatively simple problem uh, with uh, some relatively simple equations. But uh, so mean field is that a mean field, so of course, is well known in physics. And it has been extremely useful, and it is more or less in the origin of what I was describing. Uh, okay. So the mean field term in this context modify the dynamics of individual particles to, to take account of the interaction. But at the end of the day, you have a mathematical problem is uh, one particle plus some additional term, uh, and, uh, and that's it. It's not uh, studying uh, the all the, the, the particles uh, simultaneously, uh, which is impossible to do. Okay. And the idea of Pierre Louis and uh, Jean Michel Lazry was uh, that maybe we could apply this idea to humans. Uh, and uh, in the case of humans, the idea is humans, after all, are like particles. They are more or less identical. If you accept uh, Bill Gates and these guys, uh, we are uh, we are more or less the same. We more or less uh, be, uh, behave uh, in a similar manner. And there are many individuals, right? Many individuals, uh, humans, and then uh, that's it. Okay, but there is a big difference. Uh, humans take decisions. Particles don't take decisions. They follow some laws, but not humans. We take decisions and interaction is more like a competition. So their idea was, say, okay, we are going to consider a huge Nash equilibrium game with uh, uh, identical players, large number of players goes to infinity. And if we follow the idea of physics, if homogenization or uh, averaging occurs, there, there should be a representative agent solving a control problem, but with a term which with additional terms, so it does not solve exactly the same problem as if it, if it guy will be by himself or herself. So the, the, the problem will be uh, incorporating uh, interaction in some way. And, uh, but eventually, like in physics, we will have a, a control problem instead of a game problem. Instead of a huge Nash game, game problem, we'll have a stochastic control problem with some additional terms. And uh, that's it. So if uh, the intuition of physics is correct here, that will be what the situation. So what they, where what they have invented is to see in what cases this can occur. This can occur. And it has been the beginning of a really a success story, fantastic success story, because a lot of people now are working on that. And with a lot of extensions, in particular, uh, to incorporate this idea that humans, uh, uh, they, they may be identical, but not completely and they are, uh, they are, uh, they are, uh... do you hear me? Because I have a... yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's okay, because yeah. I got the message that internet connection is, is unstable. Okay. Uh, so there are people like uh, mentioned Bill Gates who are not really uh, anybody <laughs> and, uh, and okay, but 
but nevertheless, it's been a very interesting, uh, uh, lot of situation, lot of interesting uh, mathematical problems, and also interesting for applications. Okay, what is the situation where the phenomenon occurs? So here I go back to my standard problem and I will uh, I will modify it in order to introduce mean field games. So I mentioned it's a game, so we have not just one one problem. We have uh, we have n players, and each player has a dynamics so state x1 xn. Okay, and we have uh, randomness. Each of them has faces a uh, randomness. We call it lo local randomness because there has been also global randomness, which means a key situation where there is a noise common to everybody, which I will not mention here. So a lot of developments. But in the, in the basic, basic case, so here is the issue. So each one faces as a dynamics which look like uh, as, as usual, G of Xi, I will come to this term, of course, and then the diffusion term and uh, local, local uh, noise. And here is the interaction. So of course, like the, the, the evolution of Xi depends on all the, the other evolutions, like J. Uh, it could depend on all the controls of people, but here to simplify, I consider that it depends only on the state of the, of the guys. This is a control of this I player, but it's not the general function of X, XJ, uh, J not I, it must be in this way. So in other words, uh, It's an example, it could be a little bit more uh, sophisticated than that, but this is an example where the theory can work. So instead of a general function, you take uh, the mean, uh, the mean n minus one means that you have a subtracted number i, so the other guys, the other guys, and there they have xj, a state, so you average that and that modify your own trajectory, trajectory of number i. You could have more complex things, of course, but that's just maybe the easiest way to understand. So the trajectory depends on the others in this way, in a specific manner. And uh, okay. And the cost function, same thing occurs, same thing occurs. The cost function, so each of the, each, each of the persons uh, uh, has, a, it's a game, right? It's a Nash game. So each of the players has a functional that he or she wants to minimize and depends on everybody in this way. So it depends on its own, State, its own control, but also the interaction in the same way. So we modify the problem in this way, right? Again, so the interaction is by this term, and the same, some, same stuff at final state. So this is a problem. We have a large, uh, n is very large. We have a, uh, uh, we have a Nash, we, well, we look for a Nash equilibrium. It's very complex, okay? It's very complex. And as n, as n goes to infinity, things simplify a lot. So, and uh, then the problem reduces to a, so this term becomes as, as it is, as this. So it, then it ends up, as n goes to infinity, it ends up to this thing. There is a problem of a representative agent, which is simply a control problem in which you fix a parameter here. So in other words, well, this guy, this representative agent, it ha he has 
he, she has a problem as, as, as usual, except there is some clear term which for him or her, it is given. It, it is the environment. The environment affects the dynamics in a way that the guy cannot, there is nothing that he can do with it. He has to accept that. So he has a modified uh, dynamics, taking into account the, this term, which is fixed for when he solves this problem. The same with a, with a, with a payoff. And now the representative agent as a, as a, as a standard control problem to solve, where y is just a parameter, it's fixed. In this case, it's just a deterministic function. That's fine. So we are back into standard control theory with a parameter. And this parameter is fixed as a fixed point. And this parameter uh, finally will coincide with the uh, expected value of x hat, which comes uh, clearly from uh, this. When you have something like that, by law of large number, you end up with an expectation, right? So that's what it comes. So eventually, you fix this term by this. OK? And uh, what happens? Now, if you solve uh, this problem, so it means you solve a control problem, this as a parameter, and then you make this fixed point business. The corresponding optimal control, if each player uses it, applies it to its own to its own state, then the result is that this is a good thing to do because it's an approximate Nash equilibrium for the initial problem. So if you do that, you are very close as n goes to infinity to the solution of a big Nash problem. And in this way, uh, we have found a, a relatively simple way to take a good decision in something which is tractable. Okay. So that's a big, uh, I hope uh, you get my point. I'm sorry if you know that very well already. So <laughs> uh, but, okay. And then, uh, so that's summary of the basic ideas of mean field games. And you see, so it's not uh, the, same the same thing as mean field type control, but the mathematics are very close. And now, uh, because, so I want to tell, uh, that was my message to my colleagues and students in management science, that in fact, this theory is very relevant in management science. And we should uh, look at it more. Uh, and in the time uh, which remains, I want to describe why it is useful in management science. Although I have not seen much progress in this direction, but I believe in it. <laughs> uh, Okay, so in my presentation, I, uh, I focus on the issue that I knew I know well, in particularly uh, because of uh, experience in inventory control, investment decision, and, uh, and the, there is this, the model, the problem of modeling the demand. In inventory control, you have to know the, your demand when you produce your, you produce something, uh, you have to understand the demand, which is the source of your customers, right? And uh, so this is a basic problem of management science, how to, how to, uh, to, to have a good idea of the demand of a product or a service or whatever. Whatever is the, the objective of your company, you face customers, so you must know your demand, okay? 
So what exists now is, uh, of course, statistical approaches. You look at the past and you try to estimate the future. Uh, this uh, this is purely statistical approach. There is a maybe a better approach to understand, which I call knowledge models. You build you build your demand. You have a model for the demand depending on various factors. For instance, the price, your your uh, the price of your product, but also maybe other things. And uh, there is a lot of papers in the literature about knowledge model for. Uh, Price management or uh, marketing uh, public amount of publicity, promotion effort that you make, and so on. So that exists. So that's standard management science, and of course, uh, control theory is very, uh, very much applicable to that. And uh, and you, you, <laughs> and uh, you know, you know that very well. Okay, I want to, to mention here something which is different because I want to introduce Minfield, uh, what, what is the role of Minfield games in this, in this matter? Why, why uh, so what is the connection? So the connection uh, is uh, another thing, uh, different from price, different from publicity, marketing effort and so on, which, which in fact exists. Is important, and uh, to to stimulate the student, I, I mentioned this type of questions, <laughs> which I think are relevant in management science. I've been always personally uh, surprised. Uh, so by this, if you want to open a restaurant. Where do you put your restaurant? In a place where there are a lot of restaurants already, or a lot of competition, or a place where there is very few restaurants, and there is a you should think we'll put it in a place where there is very few because there is there is a lack of restaurants in this place. It's wrong. <laughs> it's not. It doesn't work like that. In reality, you put a restaurant where there are many restaurants already. A similar examples, uh, startup. You want to open a startup. Why do you go to Silicon Valley? Uh, Silicon Valley is uh, very expensive. Uh, in fact, that Texas is trying to bring a lot of, uh, <laughs> they say uh, Silicon Valley is not, we should not go there. It's so expensive. So come to Texas, it's uh, cheaper. <laughs> and uh, still, uh, you put a startup in Silicon Valley, right? Why do you? Why is that so? What is it? Uh, it is something. Uh, so I give this example, uh, which is not accurate anymore, but was true in the past. Uh, the opening of malls. Why do you put the store in a mall? Uh, now it's dead. Malls are dead, so it's a different thing which is occurring. But it was the past. In the past, it was not like that. Uh, you can say similar things with social networks, e-commerce, and so on. Okay. So in other, in a, in a, in, a, in other words, uh, the reason what he, what happens is this: the corporation faces demand which does not depend uniquely on your the own characteristic of the company, which is the quality of the product, the publicity. So uh, demand depends only of also of the, on the environment, not just on yourself, not just on your own decision, your own qualities. It depends also of the environment, the location, the interest for a type of product, uh, and so on. Uh, so that's it. So and the idea is how do we model that? So the, the environment impact your own demand, but how do we do that? I believe it's exactly the same as Minfield Games. Uh, it's, it's more or less you have, because the guys, the other restaurants are also your competitors. You go in the same street, but they compete with you. So you compete with them and they compete with you, but together it's better for all of them. Okay. So that, 
very close to the idea of meeting game. And uh, I wanted to promote this, this concept and to try to be a little bit more specific in times we are, which uh, remains. Maybe I have 10 minutes or what? About? Hector. Hector, I have 10 minutes. For Sorry. Me, right? Uh, yeah, no, 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 go ahead. Uh, I go ahead, okay. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, you may have questions, by the way. Okay, you will have. Uh, so I try to be a little bit more specific. A uh, lot of things to be done here. Myself, I'm not very good in building models, but uh, I try to motivate. So the standard method is uh, the elementary method is to model GT a demand is to do uh, there is a trend which we may think of external and something uh, random like a winner process and that's a standard model for demand and uh, and uh, that's it okay we know that uh, we can do a little bit better. Uh, for instance, uh, demand. So, because because what I describe is totally external, right? The demand is totally external. It must depend on you. Not only it does not depend on the environment, but it does not depend on you. Totally external. You can do a little bit better. It depends on you. It depends on uh, the state. Why? Let me explain. For instance, if you go, I am in Dallas. If I uh, if I want to buy my uh, stuff uh, to to uh, to to save time, I go maybe uh, in the evening. Here are the store, the big uh, the big stores. Uh, uh, this they close maybe at ten p.m. Okay, if I go at 9.30 p.m., I get everything. Everything is there. Everything is there. There are not so many customers, but everything is there, plenty of things. And in half an hour after, the, the store closes, and all these things go to a lot of is perishable. A lot of things is perishable, of course, food and so on. And it goes to, I don't know where, charities, uh, it, it disappears. So it looks like a waste. It's very strange that uh, you leave everything up to the very end, uh, which may, makes no sense because uh, you cannot sell all of it in half an hour. That's absolutely impossible. Why is that so? It's because I know I will not I will not go myself at 9:30 if I know the, the store will be empty. <laughs> I will not do that. I know it will be full, so I go at 9:30 instead of instead of going in the middle of the day, right? So it means the fact that you have plenty of thing attracts demand. So it makes sense that the demand depends on X. It's still yourself, your attractivity. Uh, the fact that your product is abundant uh, is important for the demand, okay? So you could say something like that now to, to change a model. Uh, the, the, the previous thing plus something depending on the set and something new. The thing that I was describing, uh, it doesn't depend on you. Depends on the industry in general, depends on the type of a product, depends on the location, depends on social networks, what we call the global environment. So this term does not depend, this factor does not depend, but influence your demand. And I call it goodwill. And I represent it by YT. And therefore I will have a demand which uh, there is some external term, there is your own, or own state and something external. I have to know how it depends on this thing, but I cannot, I cannot decide what it is. It is the environment. Okay. So I have a more interesting demand now. And if I formulate uh, impulse control that 
few of you know very well uh, the procurement. How do I do my procurement? So I, uh, by an impulse control, so I have a sequence of orders, time, and order quantities. And so this is an impulse control, would be a continuous control, but, and then I will have a problem like that. My inventory is depends. So here is this parameter representing the goodwill. I have the evolution of my inventory depleted by the demand. And uh, this is the replenishment, the orders. And then I could think of a stochastic uh, inventory control problem, uh, this setup. And then uh, I fix the goodwill by the fixed point equation, this one, where x hat is the optimal state, exactly as we do in, uh, in field games. And why do we do that? Because in fact, uh, the reason of this is, although each of the guys, each of the, each of the guys look as a I, yt as an environment term, in fact, this environment is made of people who are, live, who are exactly like you, your competitors, but they are exactly like you. So, and the averaging, the averaging, uh, the averaging idea is that you should take the, the expected value of your own, of your own state. Okay, and. Uh, now, here I introduce the pricing. What do I do with pricing? Let's, so there was no pricing issue before. So let me discuss now the issue of pricing and why mean field games is relevant also in pricing. Okay, in pricing, here is, uh, here is the basic thing which has been studied a lot. But because of pricing, you cannot just minimize uh, cost like inventory control. We have we have to reinstate profit because uh, we have to take into account account the revenue, the income. Uh, so the basic thing that people have been doing is that going back to the initial problem, the new, it was external. Now it's not external, uh, purely a concern. It will depend on price. Okay, okay that's right. So the literature has studied the problem, including myself, study the problem of uh, new depending on P. Of course, should be decreasing. And then, uh, then, you, then you have some mathematical uh, theory, which allows you to decide the right pricing, okay? Right pricing. But this is, Again, a situation where, where you don't take into account the environment. How, do, how does the environment play a role here? It's because the competitors, they do the same and they put their own price. And you cannot fix your price without, without taking into account the price of your competitors, okay? That's clear, that's obvious. So there is this, this context of, uh, of price of competitors, I call it market price. There is a relevant price in the market. And you have to take in this into account to fix your own price. So each corporation will take the market price as exogenous, but at the end of the day, this market price is an averaging also of the price of all the players in the market. Certainly, okay. And uh, how do we model that? Something like that, for instance, there is, uh, you will have a new depending on P and some P bar. So P is your own price and P bar, and you see it's different. So when you increase your P, you deplete your demand, but when P bar increases, it increases your demand because it's good for you that the competitors uh, have, a, have a high price because they will come to you, okay? 
you have a simple a simple uh, simple model and then you can go on and re uh, reformulate the stochastic control with impulse control with a pricing policy to to uh, to get something like that and if, at the end of the day you get uh, an average okay uh, I think, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, let me conclude by making some comments. First of all, this problem I have been describing is open. It's open. I have no. I have some idea how to solve it, but I've not done it yet. And uh, so far, it's open, it has not been solved. And uh, so I would be happy that it attracts interest of some of your guys, you guys, <laughs> let me know. But it is open. So, and there are plenty of open problems in this. I described something relatively simple, relatively uh, still very complex, but relatively uh, straightforward in the formulation. But then you can uh, you can uh, you can have a lot of uh, uh, lot of additional problems. For instance, the, the fact that there is a big player in this in the in this issue. So there is a dominating player, a guy who is a, is a leader of the market or whatever. So you so you see uh, what you have to follow a guy. Uh, and uh, okay, and you may have some partial information. So you see, there are plenty of very, uh, very interesting problems motivated by something which I think is is of practical interest. This uh, being said, uh, I will I will stop here. This being said, uh, well, I will. Uh, it's still to be done, right? At, at all the levels, mathematics, but also more into the modeling, the modeling aspects, which I'm not very good in that. Okay, I will stop it, and maybe if there are any questions, I will be happy to answer. Alan, I have a question. Yes. Uh, when you refer to the optimal trajectory x hat, for example, in uh, equation 21 and others, uh, uh, it looks sounds a little like a circular problem, isn't it? I mean, yeah, exactly. Yeah, no. you have to compute the optimal and optimal trajectory and then feed it back on the, your problem. Yeah, absolutely. It's a fixed point. It's a fixed point problem. It's a fixed point. Yeah, it's a fixed point. So yeah. you have a fixed point because. Uh, this the guy depends on y, and uh, but when y is fixed as a parameter, you can compute that completely. Yt is a gen, it's a nice fun, it's a function given function of time. In this case, it's deterministic. In any case, it will be random. But the simple case I am addressing here is deterministic. So when it's deterministic, it's no not a problem. It's a, it's not stationary, but depends on y of t. But you can solve it with no problem. The solution depends on yt, and then you have to solve this fixed point problem. But from a practical point of view, how, how you, I mean, uh, ah, computationally, numerically, how do you do that? Numerically, yeah, numerically, it's a good, very good question, of course. <laughs> uh, okay, the, the, there, is a, there are a lot of uh, work. On the theory, first of all, the mathematical theory. When I say a fixed point, uh, does it exist? A fixed point, uh, blah blah. And, uh, you have to prove it, right? So there is a lot of uh, mathematical work, a lot of progress since uh, there is a lot of theory uh, in that, which is very substantial now. And uh, and then numerical analysis has been active also uh, how to solve uh, this uh, these problems. Uh, and now there is a new, a new, uh, a new interest of uh, can we apply uh, ideas of machine learning to solve this this complex problem and so on. So it's extremely active. It's right. extremely active, but there is a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. Okay. Okay. So perhaps you could uh, send us uh, 
a couple of uh, recent references. Oh, <laughs> yeah, well, uh, sure. Uh, perhaps, you, perhaps you can send uh, Hector uh, or, me, or to me. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Of course, I would be happy to do that, certainly. Yes. Uh, but uh, but uh, Hector, I'm sure if he goes to midfield uh, games, he will have you. <laughs> 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 and thousand, thousands of papers. <laughs> yeah. If we see uh, our numerical methods in midfield games, he, he will, uh, will find a lot. But of course, I can send, including books, very important books. Uh, there is uh, De La Rue, Carmona De La Rue, uh, a very important book, and also a recent, very important book of uh, Cardia Laguet, uh, De La Rue, Pierre Louis Lyons, uh, Lazri, and uh, who else? But Yours? Huh? Your book also? Yeah, I, I, had, I had written a simple book in uh, 2013. It's, it's, it's elementary, it's good, you can have a look, it's uh, more or less obsolete now, but <laughs> because it's going so fast, going so fast, uh, but it's a good way to, to start uh, someone. That's the way I learned it myself. I was very enthusiastic about that, uh, very enthusiastic, because I really think it's a real, it's real progress compared to stochastic control. The real progress, uh, and uh, and it, it is applicable to a lot of interesting uh, questions. Uh, okay. Well, I, I have a question, like yes, Hector. Uh, yes, uh, it's a uh, it's about the, the the open problem you mentioned in the last. Yes, in, in inventory control, yes. Inventory, yes. Uh, as for the solution, uh, in, yes, in the, the impulsive control, uh, do you need, I think, uh, in, in order to solve this problem, uh, do you have in mind some tool to... I have in mind a few things, but of uh, course, I have in mind. For example, uh, it's uh, dynamic mind. programming. It's yeah, like, sure. it's the same yeah. like, uh, Yes. Uh, oh, why, what, what, why is it why is it open in the in the, in the standard? Why what is the theory which is available? Let me summarize it. It's something which is not very much used in stochastic control, but exists in stochastic control. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, if you do like if you go back to the to the let's go back to the standard stochastic control problem. Remember the standard that you very well know, and you know there was a feedback, right? This is your feedback. Yes. Okay, so now you plug that, if you plug that into the dynamics, you put V hat, you get, of course, it, it, suppose you have a deterministic function of X, so then it's an ordinary SD, right? Ordinary SD because it's a function of X. And uh, you have to decide what function, but if you decide any function, any feedback, then you have a SE. Mm -hmm. And this guy, what is very nice is that there is a density of the process XP, which is for which there is a very nice equation, which is the Fokker Planck equation. Okay? Mm -hmm. This is a Markov process. And Markov process diffusions, it is a diffusion. And, uh, and the Markov process has a, has a density with respect to Lebesgue measure, the probability of XT has a density. Yes. And the mm -hmm. density is solution of a PD. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes. And you can do that for stochastic control. In other words, uh, stochastic control is equivalent to a deterministic control problem, but for a PD. Mm -hmm. That's well known. It's not very really much used, but it's well known. So there is an equivalence between a stochastic control problem and a deterministic control problem for a PD. What is a problem for a PD? You replace uh, this by a function of x, so you write the Fokker-Planck equation, and this guy 
is a function of a Fokker Planck equation. So you replace the state by the probability of a state governed by Fokker Planck equation. Mm -hmm. And you have, a, you have a control problem for a PDE, completely deterministic, and it gives you the solution and it's the same. <laughs> okay, yes. It's okay. the same, uh, fortunately. <laughs> So uh, uh, it's not very much use because uh, we have dynamic programming and we, we manage with that and it's, uh, but it's still, it's true. Mm -hmm. If you go from uh, st standard stochastic control to mean field control, I want to discuss that in the context of mean field control, what is the difference? In mean field control, you uh, have, this thing uh, will depend on the M, on the, the probability distribution. When I say the expected value, it means it depends on the distribution, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. In fact, you have now, you go from a standard stochastic differential equation to a, to a, 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 a Mackin, that's of equation. Mackin uh, equation uh, is an it's equation. It's a couplet. It's couplet. Huh? It's a couplet equation, no? One. Yeah, it's, one a, of... it's the equation of a Fokker Planck equation, which depends. Uh -huh. So you have a PD and you have a real PD depending on the it's deterministic, but with terms depending on the probability. So you have a for kind so you have a problem which is more complicated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but basically, but still, it remains deterministic. You have a, you have a, the state is, is a problem. So the SD, the, the Fokker Planck equation be, becomes uh, uh, Mackin Lasso equation. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you have to control it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and this control is uh, then, but it's not stochastic control, if it's a different problem. And, uh, but this problem has been, is, I mean, there is a lot of things that you can do there. It's a lot of, it's mathematically, it's challenging. It's not trivial, of course, uh, but there has been a lot of work uh, which exists. And uh, so it's a lot of progress in the recent years. Okay. And, but this works because because uh, the, the underlying stochastic problem has a density. Mm -hmm. It's okay. not the case in impulse control. Mm -hmm. You have jumps, you have uh, you don't have a density anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. this is a very serious difficulty to go from continuous control to impulse control in the context of mean field games. Okay. Because the, the, the mean, you don't have the, you don't have the, density. the, the Fokker Planck equation anymore. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the, that's the, that's the difficulty. Okay. So you have a, a lot of work to be done there. That's the origin of the difficulty. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, now I, I, I just want to, 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 to see a, a comment. Just a comment. Uh, when we were studying, uh, and Adolfo is uh, uh, agree with me. When when you read uh, several uh, words on mean field games or mean field control, yeah. uh, authors tend to work with a limit model, but they uh, don't. Uh, uh, work on the approximation of the, you know, um, be, behind this, this model, you have another problem, a, a particle model, whose mean, whose mean field, whose limit model becomes, or, no, in other words, whose mean field model becomes the limit of all these interaction problems. Yeah. But, it, but, but in the literature, when you read mean field control and mean field games, you don't see this, uh, uh, this kind of, of convergence. 
Right? Yes, yes, you see. Now, why do you say that? There is a lot of work on the convergence. Yes, yes. But, but the convergence is not uh, um, common to, 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 to prove no? that the mean field model is actually the limit model of the interacting particles. So people just uh, work with, they assume that they, 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 there exists a mean field model and then still uh, start working on, on that model. But uh, it's a, I, I don't know why it's, uh, it's not prone to the convergence of, of, the, of these models, but maybe you, you know. Uh, uh, well, first of all, uh, first of all, well, I don't know if I answer your question, but first of all, the limit problem is of interest by itself. Okay, I like, I like. The, 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 you don't, you don't, uh, you have to approach a limit problem by itself. You don't approach as a limit of a approximation because you cannot solve the approximation. <laughs> it's so complex. So you have to, the, the, the magic of this is that to go to infinity is good. Okay. In other words, uh, the fact that n goes to infinity is good. It simplifies. Yes, yes, yes. It's clear. But, it's that's clear. the magic. It's like uh, you when you solve Stokes' Navier-Stokes equation, you don't go to Boltzmann equation. You solve it directly. Mm, okay. Uh -huh. so, so that's one of the answer to your question. So the limit problem is of interest by itself. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, there remains, uh, you're right, there remains the issue of addressing the convergence, <laughs> but uh, which people work on it, but the limit problem is of interest by itself. So, so that's you, why accept you... Limit, you accept the limit problem and you try to solve it. Uh, yeah, okay. Creo que Adolfo tenía una pregunta. Yes, Alain, uh, I, I think the, the, the question of Hector is in the following sense. If uh, when you you solve the mean the limit problem the mean field uh, the mean limit problem, okay, uh, you find a solution. But yes. the interesting problem is to analyze the optimality deviation when do you when you use the the solution in the original control problem in the original game, right? Yes, um, cool. this, is the, the, this is not common in, in the literature. Analyze this this uh, this. This optimality deviation, right? Mm -hmm. The convergence uh, no, is very clear. No, it's a, it's a le totally legitimate question. <laughs> totally legitimate. In practice, uh, it's true that people accept, not all, but uh, people accept that it is a limit problem of a problem. And uh, so this step is accepted and you make, you, you put your energy in solving the limit problem. Yeah. But, but you are right, it's legitimate, I agree. And it, it, people work on it. It's not, I'm not saying, I don't think it, it's inexistent. Uh, but it's but not common, eh? To, to find it's less common find because it. it's like a lot of people, of course, I mean, if you look at the uh, people, there is some work on, uh, you go from Boltzmann equation to Navier-Stokes equation. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. And, but, but a lot of people work on the Xox equation without uh, referring to Boltzmann equation, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but there are people who prove that Boltzmann equation leads to Navier-Stokes equation. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you, uh, that's the way I will answer, including myself. I, I prefer, I work on the limit problem. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay? Yes. yes, yes, sure. Yeah. It's, it's good. Thank you, Alain. Yeah, welcome. Okay. Uh, so, I think, uh, Professor Onesimo, do you want to close the session? Well, uh, I don't know. Uh, are there any more questions? Uh, anyone in the audience? No questions, comments? Well, thank you, Alan. I think it's uh, it was a very nice, uh, interesting talk, and uh, uh, we want to thank you for uh, accepting the our invitation. No, it was a pleasure and honor. Okay, and, so and uh, everybody, if you want to to unmute your your oh. microphone 
Por ah, favor, no. pongan sus micrófonos todos. <risa> un aplauso al profesor. Un aplauso al profesor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Take care. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you, Alain. Alain. Thank you. Please, say hello to Good to see you all. Good to see you guys. Thank you, Alain. I'll see you physically someday.